Section three of Scott's Last Expedition, Volume one. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Scott's Last Expedition, Volume one. The Journals of Robert Falcon Scott, arranged by Leonard Huxley. Chapter two in the pack sunday december eleventh the ice grew closer during the night and at six it seemed hopeless to try and get ahead the pack here is very regular the floes about two and a half feet thick and very solid they are pressed closely together but being irregular in shape open spaces frequently occur generally triangular in shape it might be noted that such ice as this occupies much greater space than it originally did when it formed a complete sheet hence if the ross sea were wholly frozen over in the spring the total quantity of pack to the north of it when it breaks out must be immense the ice looks as though it must have come from the ross sea and yet one is puzzled to account for the absence of pressure we have lain tight in the pack all day the wind from six a m strong from west and northwest with snow the wind has eased to-night and for some hours the glass which fell rapidly last night has been stationary i expect the wind will shift soon pressure on the pack has eased but so far it has not opened this morning rennick got a sounding at two thousand fifteen fathoms from bottom similar to yesterday with small pieces of basic lava. These two soundings appear to show a great distribution of this volcanic rock by ice. The line was weighed by hand after the soundings. I read service in the wardroom. This afternoon all hands have been away on ski over the floes. It is delightful to get the exercise. I am much pleased with the ski and ski boots. Both are very well adapted to our purposes. This waiting requires patience though i suppose it was to be expected at such an early season it is difficult to know when to try and push on again monday december twelfth the pack was a little looser this morning there was a distinct long swell apparently from northwest the floes were not apart but barely touching the edges which were hard pressed yesterday the wind still holds from northwest but lighter Gran Oates and Bowers went on ski towards a reported island about which there had been some difference of opinion. I felt certain it was a berg, and it proved to be so, only of a very curious dome shape with very low cliffs all about. Fires were ordered for twelve, and at eleven thirty we started steaming with plain sail set. We made and are making fair progress on the whole but it is very uneven. We escaped from the heavy flows about us into much thinner pack, then through two water holes, then back to the thinner pack, consisting of thin flows of large area fairly easily broken. All went well till we struck heavy flows again, then for half an hour we stopped dead. Then on again, and since alternately bad and good, that is, thin young flows and hoary older ones, occasionally a pressed-up berg very heavy the best news of yesterday was that we drifted fifty miles to the southeast so that we have not really stopped our progress at all though it has of course been pretty slow i really don't know what to think of the pack or when to hope for open water we tried atkinson's blubber stove this afternoon with great success the interior of the stove holds a pipe in a single coil pierced with holes on the underside these holes drip oil on to an asbestos burner the blubber is placed in a tank suitably built around the chimney the overflow of oil from this tank leads to the feed pipe in the stove with a cock to regulate the flow a very simple device but as has been shown a very effective one the stove gives great heat but of course some blubber smell however with such stoves in the south one would never lack cooked food or warm hut 
discussed with right the fact that the hummocks on sea ice always yield fresh water we agreed that the brine must simply run down out of the ice it will be interesting to bring up a piece of sea ice and watch this process but the fact itself is interesting as showing that the process producing the hummock is really producing fresh water it may also be noted as phenomenon which makes all the difference to the ice navigator footnote from dr wilson's journal december eighteenth watered ship at a tumbled flow sea ice when pressed up into large hummocks gradually loses all its salt even when sea water freezes it squeezes out the great bulk of its salt as a solid but the sea water gets into it by soaking again and yet when held out of the water as it is in a hummock the salt all drains out and the melted ice is blue and quite good for drinking engines etc End of footnote. truly the getting to our winter quarters is no light task at first the gales and heavy seas and now this continuous fight with the pack ice eight p m we are getting on with much bumping and occasional hold-ups tuesday december thirteenth i was up most of the night never have i experienced such rapid and complete changes of prospect chetham in the last dog watch was running the ship through sludgy new ice making with all sail set four or five knots bruce in the first took over as we got into heavy ice again but after a severe tussle got through into better conditions the ice of yesterday loose with sludgy thin flows between the middle watch found us making for an open lead the ice around hard and heavy we got through and by sticking to the open water and then to some recently frozen pools made good progress at the end of the middle watch trouble began again and during this and the first part of the morning we were wrestling with the worst conditions we have met heavy hummocked bay ice the flow standing seven or eight feet out of water and very deep below it was just such ice as we encountered at king edward's land in the discovery i've never seen anything more formidable the last part of the morning watch was spent in a long recently frozen lead or pool and the ship went well ahead again these changes sound tame enough but they are a great strain on one's nerves one is forever wondering whether one has done right in trying to come down so far east and having regard to coal what ought to be done under the circumstances in the first watch came many alterations of opinion time and again it looks as though we ought to stop when it seemed futile to be pushing and pushing without result then would come a stretch of easy going and the impression that all was going very well with us the fact of the matter is it is difficult not to imagine the conditions in which one finds oneself to be more extensive than they are it is wearing to have to face new conditions every hour this morning we met at breakfast in great spirits the ship has been boring along well for two hours then chetham suddenly ran her into a belt of the worst and we were held up immediately we can push back again i think but meanwhile we have taken advantage of the conditions to water ship these big flows are very handy for that purpose at any rate rennick got a sounding two thousand one hundred twenty four fathoms similar bottom including volcanic lava december thirteenth continued sixty seven degree thirty south one hundred seventy seven degree fifty eight west made good s twenty e twenty seven c crozier s twenty one west six hundred forty four we got in several tons of ice then pushed off and slowly and laboriously worked our way to one of the recently frozen pools it was not easily crossed but when we came to its junction with the next part to the southwest in which direction i proposed to go we were quite hung up a little inspection showed that the big flows were tending to close 
it seems as though the tenacity of the six or seven inches of recent ice over the pools is enormously increased by lateral pressure but whatever the cause we could not budge we have decided to put fires out and remain here till the conditions change altogether for the better it is sheer waste of coal to make further attempts to break through as things are at present we've been set to the east during the past days is it the normal set in the region or due to the prevalence of westerly winds possibly much depends on this as concerns our date of release it is annoying but one must contain one's soul in patience and hope for a brighter outlook in a day or two meanwhile we shall sound and do as much biological work as is possible the pack is a sunless place as a rule this morning we had bright sunshine for a few hours but later the sky clouded over from the north again and now it is snowing dismally it is calm wednesday december fourteenth position north two west one half the pack still close around from the masthead one can see a few patches of open water in different directions but the main outlook is the same scene of desolate hummocky pack the wind has come from the southwest force two we have bright sunshine and good sights the ship has swung to the wind and the floes around are continually moving they change their relative positions in a slow furtive creeping fashion the temperature is thirty five degree the water twenty nine point two degree to twenty nine point five under such conditions the thin sludgy ice ought to be weakening all the time a few inches of such stuff should allow us to push through anywhere one realizes the awful monotony of a long stay in the pack such as nansen and others experienced one can imagine such days as these lengthening into interminable months and years for us there is novelty and every one has work to do or makes work so that there is no keen sense of impatience nelson and lily were up all night with the current meter it is not quite satisfactory but some result has been obtained they will also get a series of temperatures and samples and use the vertical tow net the current is satisfactory both days the fixes have been good it is best that we should go north and west I had a great fear that we should be drifted east and so away to regions of permanent pack. If we go on in this direction, it can only be a question of time before we are freed. We've all been away on ski on the large floe, to which we anchored this morning. Gran is wonderfully good and gives instruction well. It was hot and garments came off one by one. The soldier, footnote, Captain Oates' nickname, end of footnote and atkinson were stripped to the waist eventually and have been sliding around the floe for some time in that condition nearly everyone has been wearing goggles the glare is very bad pontin tried to get a color picture but unfortunately the ice colors are too delicate for this tonight campbell evans and i went over the floe and each in turn towed the other two it was fairly easy work that is to pull three hundred ten to three hundred twenty pounds one could pull it perhaps more easily on foot yet it would be impossible to pull such a load on a sledge what a puzzle this pulling of loads is if one could think that this captivity was soon to end there would be little reason to regret it it is giving practice with our deep sea gear and has made every one keen to learn the proper use of ski the swell has increased considerably but it is impossible to tell from what direction it comes one can simply note that the ship and brash ice swing to and fro bumping into the floe note from the glossary brash small ice fragments from a floe that is breaking up end of note we opened the ice house to-day and found the meat in excellent condition most of it still frozen thursday december fifteenth sixty six degree twenty three south one hundred seventy seven degree fifty nine west 
sit, north two, east, five and one half. In the morning the conditions were unaltered. When for a ski run before breakfast, it makes a wonderful difference to get the blood circulating by a little exercise. After breakfast, we served out ski to the men of the landing party. They are all very keen to learn, and Grant has been out morning and afternoon giving instruction. Mears got some of his dogs out and a sledge. Two, lots of seven, those that looked in worse condition, and several are getting very fat, were tried. They were very short of wind. It is difficult to understand how they can get so fat, as they only get two and a half biscuits a day at the most. The ponies are looking very well in the hole, especially those in the outside stalls. Rennick got a sounding today, 1,844 fathoms. Reversible thermometers were placed close to bottom and 500 fathoms up. We shall get a very good series of temperatures from the bottom up during the wait. Nelson will try to get some more current observations tonight or tomorrow. It is very trying to find oneself continually drifting north, but one is thankful not to be going east. Tonight it has fallen calm, and the flows have decidedly opened. There is a lot of water about the ship, but it does not look to extend far. Meanwhile, the brash and thinner flows are melting. Everything of that sort must help, but it's trying to the patients to be delayed like this. We have seen enough to know that with a northwesterly or a westerly wind, the flows tend to pack, and that they open when it is calm. The question is, will they open more with an easterly or a southeasterly wind? That is the hope. Signs of open water round and about are certainly increasing rather than diminishing. Friday, December 16th. The wind sprang up from the northeast this morning, bringing snow, the light hail, and finally rain. It grew very thick and has remained so all day. Early the flow on which we had done so much skiing broke up, and we gathered in our ice anchors, then put on head sail, to which she gradually paid off. With a fair wind we set sail on the foremast, and slowly but surely she pushed the heavy flows aside. At lunchtime we entered a long lead of open water, and for nearly half an hour we sailed along comfortably in it. Entering the pack again, we found the flows much lighter, and again pushed on slowly. In all, we may have made as much as three miles. I have observed for some time some flows of immense area forming a chain of lakes in this pack, and have been most anxious to discover their thickness. They are most certainly the result of the freezing of comparatively recent pools in the winter pack, and it follows that they must be getting weaker day by day. If one could be certain, firstly, that these big areas extend to the south, and secondly, that the ship could go through them, it would be worth getting up steam. We've arrived at the edge of one of these flows, and the ship will not go through under sail, but I'm sure she would do so under steam. Is this a typical flow, and are there more ahead? One of the ponies got down this afternoon. Oates thinks it was probably asleep and fell, but the incident is alarming. The animals are not too strong. On this account, this delay is harassing, otherwise we should not have much to regret. Saturday, December 17th, 67 degree, 24, 177 degree, 34. Drift for 48 hours, south, 82, east, 9.7. Note from the glossary, drift snow swept from the ground like dust and driven before the wind end of note it rained hard and the glass fell rapidly last night with every sign of a coming gale this morning the wind increased to four six from the west with snow at noon the barograph curve turned up and the wind moderated the sky gradually clearing tonight it is fairly bright and clear there is a light southwesterly wind. It seems rather as though the great gales of the westerlies must begin in these latitudes with such mild disturbances as we have just experienced. 
I think it is the first time I have known rain beyond the Antarctic Circle. It is interesting to speculate on its effect in melting the flows. We scarcely moved all day, but bergs, which have become quite old friends through the week, are on the move, and one has approached and almost circled us. Evidently these bergs are moving about in an irregular fashion. Only they must have all travelled a little east in the forty-eight hours, as we have done. Another interesting observation tonight is that of the slow passage of a stream of old heavy flows, past the ship and the lighter ice in which she is held. There are signs of water sky to the south, and I'm impatient to be off, but still one feels that waiting may be good policy, and I should certainly contemplate waiting some time longer if it weren't for the ponies. Everyone is wonderfully cheerful. There is laughter all day. Nelson finished his series of temperatures and samples today with an observation at 1,800 meters. Series of Sea Temperatures December 14th Depth meters, zero Temperature uncorrected, negative 1.67 At 10 meters, negative 1.84 20, negative 1.86 30, negative 1.89 50, negative 1.92 75, negative 1.93 100, negative 1.80 125, negative 1.11 150, negative 0.63 At 200, 0.24 500, 1.18 1500, 0.935 for December 17th, 1800 meters, temperature 0 0.61, 2300 meters, temperature 0 0.48. For December 15th, 2800 meters, temperature 0 0.28, 3220, 0 0.11, 3650, negative 0.13, no sample. At 3891, bottom. For December 20th, 2,300, parentheses, 1,260 FMS, temperature 0.48 degrees centigrade, at 3,220, parentheses, 1,660 FMS, 0.11 degrees centigrade, 3,300, bottom. A curious point is that the bottom layer is two-tenths higher on the 20th, remaining in accord with the same depth on the 15th. Sunday, December 18th. In the night it fell calm and the flows opened out. There's more open water between the flows around us, yet not a great deal more. In general, what we have observed on the opening of the pack means a very small increase in the open water spaces, but enough to convey the impression that the flows instead of wishing to rub shoulders and grind against one another, desire to be apart. They touch lightly where they touch at all. Such a condition makes much difference to the ship in attempts to force her through, as each flow is freer to move on being struck. If a pack be taken as an area bounded by open water, it is evident that a small increase of the periphery or a small outward movement of the flows will add much to the open water spaces and create a general freedom. The opening of this pack was reported at 3 a.m., and orders were given to raise steam. The die is cast, and we must now make a determined push for the open southern sea. There is a considerable swell from the northwest. It should help us to get along. Evening Again, extraordinary differences of fortune at first, things looked very bad. It took nearly half an hour to get started, much more than an hour to work away to one of the large area flows to which I have referred. Then, to my horror, the ship refused to look at it. Again, by hard fighting, we worked away to a crack running across this sheet, and to get through this crack required many stoppages and engine reversals. Then we had to shoot away south to avoid another unbroken flow of large area, but after we had rounded this, 
things became easier. From six o'clock we were almost able to keep a steady course, only occasionally hung up by some thicker flow. The rest of the ice was fairly recent and easily broken. At seven, the leads of recent ice became easier still, and at eight, we entered a long lane of open water. For a time, we almost thought we had come to the end of our troubles, and there was much jubilation. But alas, at the end of the lead, we have come again to heavy bay ice. It is undoubtedly this mixture of bay ice which causes the open leads, and I cannot but think that this is the King Edward's land pack. We are making southwest as best we can. What an exasperating game this is! One cannot tell what is going to happen in the next half or even quarter of an hour. At one moment, everything looks flourishing. The next one begins to doubt if it is possible to get through. New Fish Just at the end of the open lead tonight, we capsized a small flow, and thereby jerked a fish out on top of another one. We stopped and picked it up, finding it a beautiful silver-gray genus Notothinia, I think a new species. Snow squalls have been passing at intervals. The wind continues in the northwest. It is comparatively warm. We saw the first full-grown emperor penguin tonight. End of first part of chapter 2